Hello everyone! In this video, me, Paula Muñoz, and my partner Javiera Miranda will be presenting an analysis of two types of different types. The objective of this video is to prove our comprehension by analyzing the genera and function of two types, explaining and exemplifying their scaffolding pattern, their most relevant grammatical features, recurrence rules, progression patterns, and the most frequent relations and connections. Hello, I'm Javiera Miranda, and the first text that we are going to analyze is called How to Perform Astral Projection, and it was published on June 25th, 2022. First of all, the genre of this text is instructive. Its function is to instruct and guide the reader with the steps, illustrating how to do something, in this case, to achieve an astral projection. Regarding the scaffolding, we can say that the text is made up of an introductory statement and a sequence of steps. We can find the introductory statement in the title, which mentions the goal, and we also have an introductory paragraph in which we can find a definition of an astral projection and how it is usually done. The scaffolding of the text also includes a sequence of steps, which are divided into two groups. The first one with the objective of preparing the reader for the next part, which is about how to actually perform the action of moving the soul from the body. Each of the groups contains a sequence of steps to reach those objectives in order to succeed in the astral projection, which is the principal aim of the text. Now we are going to present the most relevant grammatical features of this instructive text. We can find two sequences of actions, in the first part of the instructions and also in the second part. These sequences are enumerated with numbers from 1 to 4. Also, we can identify that the majority of the text is constructed by imperative clauses, which give direct commands. As we can see, examples can be found throughout the whole text. Another important grammatical feature are adverbial clauses, which are dependent clauses that function as an adverb in a sentence. Some examples are included in the next sentences. It is better to understand astral projection before you sort. Here, before you sort is the adverbial clause, which contains an adverb of time leading the clause. Adverbs are also important grammatical features in the text, since they describe how an action should be performed. Examples of this are gradually, referring to how you should make your way to your head. Another example is the adverb completely, which tells us the way the reader should relax his or her muscles. The last example is a sentence containing two more adverbs, which are deeply and completely, indicating how the reader should breathe and exhale. Now let's move to the next object of our analysis which corresponds to the recurrence rules. A recurrence rule is the presence of elements that reoccur in order to create coherence and cohesion. The first recurrence rule we can identify is an anaphoric procedure, corresponding to the subunit of pronominalization, specifically an anaphoric reference. An anaphoric reference is a unit that refers to a previously mentioned unit, written in a different way to avoid repetition. Let's look at the following example, where the subject, astral projection, is later replaced by the unit, this state. The second recurrence rule is repetition, which is about the reappearance of the same element in different parts of the text. Here we have an example of the word vibration being repeated several times throughout the paragraph. The third recurrence rule presented in the paragraph is also an anaphoric procedure, but this time, it is of determination. A determination procedure is required when an unknown element is determined and specified later in the text. The example illustrates the following. In this case, an invisible force is later determined as a silver cord. It goes from a general to a specific unit. Additionally, we have analyzed the most frequent progression pattern of this text which is the constant thematic progression. Since the text is mostly made up of imperatives, the subject is always implicit. And in all the cases, the subject will be you. 
Therefore, the implicit theme, which is constantly repeated throughout the text, is you. This can be evidenced in the following paragraph. Focus your mind on your breathing. Don't get carried away with thoughts of outside worries. And don't get preoccupied yet with the idea of your soul projecting from your body. Just let yourself sink into relaxation. Finally, we are going to analyze and exemplify the most frequent relations and connections of the constructive texts. Regarding relations, we can find two examples of subject-verb agreement. Here, the noun people is in plural form. And secondly, the verb experience is also in the plural form. Therefore, there is a subject-verb agreement. In the next example, the noun article is in the singular form, and the verb contains agrees to the form of the noun. Let's analyze another frequent relation, which is the verb and its prepositional object. Here we have identified two examples. In both sentences, the verb focus is related to the object on the body parts and on your breathing, respectively. The subjects are prepositional, since they include a preposition that answers where the reader has to focus. Regarding the most frequent connections between sentences, we can say that the implicit ones are the most common, specifically periods. For example, just in this paragraph, we have found five periods. For explicit connections, we found coordinators of addition, such as and, which is joining two independent clauses. Close your eyes and try to click your mind of distracting thoughts. Another coordinating conjunction that can be found is so, which represents consequence, joining two independent clauses. Yet, it is possible to astral travel at any time, so there are no hard and fast rules. Astral projection requires a state of deep relaxation, so it should be performed in a part of your home where you are completely comfortable. The second text to analyze is called Property for Sale, and it was published in 2022 by Cambridge University. First of all, the genre of this text is descriptive and its function is to give a description of a certain property that is looking to be sold. Concerning the descriptive scaffolding of this text, we can say that it is composed of an opening statement that introduces the subject of the description. In this text, the element described is a property, and it is introduced in the first paragraph. Moving to the second part of the scaffolding, we have paragraphs about the subject. Each of them describes one feature of the subject, and in this case, the paragraphs mention where the property is located, how it looks inside, describing the garden and other spaces of the property. As we can see, most of the sentences present different ideas about the subject. Grammatical features are linguistic units, such as words, sentences, utterances, and so forth, with the purpose of understanding a language. And the most frequently used in this descriptive text are the linking verbs, which are used to establish relations between different elements in order to create processes. Here we identify the repetition of the linking verb is. Another grammatical feature present in the text are adjectives, which are words that modify a noun. Examples of this are words like stunning, detached, and incredible. Adverbs are also included in this text, and they are words that modify a verb or an adjective. In this text, we can find adverbs such as absolutely, equally, generously, and beautifully. Another grammatical feature that is present is a relative clause, even though it is not the most frequent. Moreover, we are going to exemplify three different recurrence rules. Let's analyze them in detail. Repetition means that an element reappears in the same form in different places of the text. Property is a noun that is constantly repeated throughout this text. The second recurrence rule identified in the text is lexical substitution, which means that an element is expressed with synonyms, hypernyms, or hyponyms. In this case, the noun property is replaced by the synonyms home and house. 
One more recurrent rule that can be recognized is elision, which is about the elimination of subjects that have been previously mentioned. The subject property has been mentioned in the title and in the first paragraph as well, and then it is described as one of the most invisible homes referring to the same subject. In this case, the subject is implied, so we can say that there has been an elision of the subject to avoid redundancy located within walking distance of the town center and all amenities where you can find all your main needs. Here, different progression patterns can be observed, but the most frequent one is the constant thematic progression. A progression pattern is made up of the theme that tells us what the cause is about and the rim, which is the remaining part of the cause and provides new information about the theme. The sentences of the paragraphs have the same theme in common, and the rims give different descriptions of this. In this case, the theme of the first sentence, property, becomes the theme of the clauses that follow. In order to continue with the analysis of this text, we will clarify the most frequent relations that it presents. The first relation pattern that can be identified is the subject-verb agreement. For example, an inviting entrance hall is referring to a singular subject, so the verb provides must also be in the singular form. The final relation pattern that might be seen is a noun plus preposition. Some examples of this pattern are program of, homes within, access to, entirety of, and rear of. To conclude with the analysis of the second text, we can find implicit connections of ideas, such as periods highlighted in yellow and commas highlighted in green. Also, explicit connections can be found. Let's look at the following example. Located within walking distance of the town center and all amenities where you can find all your main needs. Here, the coordinating conjunction AND is used for joining two independent clauses. Inside, an inviting entrance hall provides access to two separate reception rooms, each of which has a fireplace and is well proportioned and well finished. And that's the end of our video analysis of two different text tags.